Hello and welcome to the last in the series of the College of Fine Arts um, virtual encounters with those of you who are coming to be uh, shockers next fall and those of you specifically uh, uh, who are going to be uh, in the College of Fine Arts. We want to welcome you to our family. The College of Fine Arts is the only comprehensive College of Fine Arts in the state of Kansas and we are comprised of four schools. The School of Art, Design, and Creative Industries, which is our visual arts school. Uh, the School of Digital Arts, which is our, uh, as it says, our digital arts uh, disciplines. And the School of Performing Arts, which is theater, musical theater, dance, and uh, uh, theater design and technology. But today we are highlighting our fourth and certainly not our least school, and that is the School of Music. Uh, the School of Music <clears throat> is uh, headed by uh, the, the director is Alex Sternfeld Dunn, and I'm going to turn it over to him now. Take it away, Alex. Thanks so much, Rodney. Uh, I'm really happy to be talking with all of you today, but I'm not alone. Uh, Besides Dean Miller, I'm also joined by Tim Shade, our Associate Director of the School of Music and Director of Bands, and Jesse Koza, who's our Coordinator of Music Admissions and Music out, uh, Outreach. Um, first, I just want to tell you a little bit about who we are, and most importantly at the core, we're just a community that values the diversity, inclusiveness, and creativity, compassion, inquiry, and quality. Um, we want to provide you with the tools that you will need to express yourself. So a little bit more about the school. Uh, we are roughly 240-ish students and about 180 undergrads and 60 graduate students. And we have almost 45 uh, faculty members between full-time, part-time, and adjuncts. One of the great things about our School of Music, and not unusual for most schools of music, is that if you come and perform on an instrument, whatever that instrument is, You'll get your one-on-one -on -one instruction um, with a applied professor who specializes in your instrument. So you're going to be taught violin by a professor of violin or tuba by a professor of tuba. We have 16 different ensembles you can be involved in. Uh, there's a lot of mentorship for our, student for our students who are pursuing a music education background. Um, and you'll get time in classrooms around public schools all throughout Kansas and Wichita. And one of the great things about our music ed pr program is that we have a 100% job placement rate for music ed majors. If you graduate with a music ed degree and seek that music ed um, position, we, there's a job for you. Um, so. As you are wanting to learn more about the School of Music, we have a couple opportunities for you to do so. I'm gonna pass it over to Jesse Koza, our coordinator of music mm -hmm. outreach, and he can talk about some ways that you might discover what's happening in the School of Music. Thank you very much, Alex. Um, so the main way that we are uh, virtually trying to teach more people about the School of Music right now is through our twice a week uh, interview lecture series called Talking at 12. Uh, these videos happen every Tuesday and Thursday at noon on our Facebook page. That's facebook.com slash WSU School of Music, all one word. Uh, they're live, so every noon, Tuesday, Thursday, uh, noon central, you can see Alex and members of our faculty discussing various topics. Uh, we've done seven of these so far. And you can find them on our Facebook page or our YouTube page. Uh, recent topics include an overview of being a music major, how to make the most of your summer, and learning about our various areas of study and our ensembles. We're actually in the middle of our ensemble section of our uh, series right now. Uh, so upcoming, we're gonna be learning about our vocal ensembles. We're gonna be learning about our athletic bands. Uh, we're also going to discuss how you can participate as a non-major. Uh, and finally, we're going to have an interview with some of our student organizations. So those of you who find that it's not enough just to study music, you have to live it as well. Uh, we are going to have a lot of options for you as far as student organizations go. 
Now these talks, they all go into a lot of detail about one aspect of the school. Like I said, just vocal ensembles, just music theory, just being a music education major. Um, and they last upwards of an hour. So, you know, we're not just jumping on, spewing some information at you and logging off. We're actually giving you a lot of valuable information that you can absorb. And if you're there live Tuesday or Thursday, you can ask questions. You can be a part of it. You know, we have faculty members who are in the chat. We have current students, former students in the chat. They're all talking and joking and laughing and answering questions and we'll answer your questions live if they come up. Um, so please stop on by uh, our Facebook page Tuesday, Thursday at noon and uh, take part of that. Uh, if you have questions about a past video, uh, you can always email me. Again, my name is Jesse Koza. Uh, my email will be at the end of this video, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, and our archive talks with captions, if you uh, find the need for captions, again, can be found on our YouTube page. Uh, and the easiest way to get to that is to just search Wichita State's School of Music. Uh, I'm now going to kick it back to Alex so that he can talk a bit about our undergraduate degrees. Thank you, Jesse. Um, yeah, as mentioned, we have all these different ways that um, different programs you can be a part of. And uh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the actual degrees that we offer in the School of Music. So our, our degrees for undergraduates fall into sort of four categories. The first is a Bachelor of Music degree. And this is the degree that's really the professional degree for um, students who want to be performers or composers. Um, we have uh, several um, disciplines within the performance category. So strings, woodwinds, voice and uh, keyboard, including organ. Um, and, and so it's a professional degree for performers and composers. Now, if you wanna be a teacher, we have the Bachelors of Music Education. Um, and that is a degree that will get you certified to teach in K through 12. It actually certifies you to teach in all um, disciplines within music education. However, we do have you focus on a specific sort of area. So if you know your life's passion and dream is to be that uh, band director that inspired you in seventh grade, we'll help you sort of meet that, that uh, inspiration. If you know that you want to be heavily involved in music and have a career, but you don't see yourself as a performer or as a teacher, then the just the general BA in music might be the degree for you. And that's really more, uh, it's got some freer electives in it. It allows you more exploration throughout the um, program. And you can actually go uh, quite far with that. And I say that as someone who himself has a BA in music. And finally, if you don't want to major in music, but you want to have some certification that shows your um, involvement with music, we also have a music minor. Um, which we highly encourage for people who maybe wanted to be a business major or a um, engineering major, but still want to be heavily involved with music, you can get a minor. And finally, I would just say that even if you don't want to major in music, we have lots of uh, ways for non-majors to be involved in the school. Now, I would like to, as I mentioned sort of at the beginning, not only do we have under an undergraduate program, but we have a flourishing graduate program. And while you right now may not be looking at a master's program, it's very likely that in your future you will. And being in a, a music program that has a graduate program actually does a great benefit to you as an undergraduate student. So I'm going to ask Tim Shade, who's the associate director of the school and is also our graduate coordinator of, uh, last year, to talk a little bit about our graduate program. Sure thing. Thanks, Alex. Uh, that's right. Dr. Sternfeld Dunn was sort of talking about the master's degree is that next level of refinement for those music majors that want sort of the next step. Our degrees kind of land in three or four categories. The third and fourth are a little different, so that's why I'll talk about it. But the first one's music performance. So whatever instrument, whatever voice type, you want to go on to that next level of, of sort of performance experience and uh, ensemble basis and all those, whatever you can think of. Uh, it's more intensive training. We have this performance degree for you. So whatever uh, voice type, like I said, or instrument. Also, uh, instrumental conducting is a part of it or choral conducting or orchestral conducting. 
So you'll study, um, if you want to be a band director or a choir director at the next level and you want some more refinement there, you come study with us how to move, uh, how to rehearse. And so it becomes a really interesting apprentice-based program. Our next sort of category is the Master of Music Education, which is a big part of our graduate program. Uh, we kind of do this in choral music, elementary music, and there's an instrumental conducting and choral conducting focus in there as well. The special ed program and Kadai are also very unique. Uh, if, you, if you're curious about sort of different teaching methods, Kadai, the Kadai workshop we do in the summer is very cool. When we go to our additional degrees, uh, we have a couple of online-based degrees, the Master of Arts Leadership and Management, and we also have uh, a music ed degree that you can get in the summer, like I was talking about with Kodai. So keep those in mind if those are, you know, you wanna jump into the job force, uh, and maybe think about a master's degree later, those two degrees are online. If you're curious about writing music, we have a master's in composition. Uh, if you want to be really in depth based with uh, sort of small ensembles, we have a chamber music degree. And of course, lots of piano uh, accompanying pedagogy. And then the last one is sort of the performer certificate. So if you don't want to get a full degree, but you want to do another year of training, maybe after your undergrad as well. So you could do a performer certificate. And we do all of those in any voice type or performance area as well. So let's kick it on back to Jesse, who will talk about our auditions. Thanks very much, Tim. Uh, now, we said at the beginning this video is partially for those students who are joining us this fall, and we cannot wait to have you. Uh, we're aware that students who are not yet uh, looking to join us will also be viewing this video, so we thought we'd talk a little bit about our auditions process so that you can be fully informed as to uh, what to expect. Now, the majority of what I'm going to be talking about is undergraduate auditions. If uh, you are looking for a graduate uh, audition date, those are usually set up more of a one-on-one -on -one kind of thing. And so I would encourage you to reach out to a faculty member to learn more about when and how you can audition. For those students looking to transfer or to join us as a first year student, uh, our auditions are going to take place uh, for the fall 2021 and spring 22 academic year, uh, November 21st, February 6th, and April 10th. Now, uh, those dates are still maybe a little bit fluid. We are uh, always looking for new ways to adapt in these interesting times that we're living in. So you may find, and I encourage you to keep checking back, that we split up uh, instrument areas by date. If we can't figure out the best way to keep everybody socially distant while we are going through our audition process. Um, video auditions uh, for fall of 2020 are still being accepted. So if you're interested in that, I would encourage you to check out wichita.edu slash audition. Um, and requirements for in-person and video auditions vary by area. Uh, so again, I would push you to that website, wichita.edu slash audition. Uh, you know, the first step is the same. Everybody needs to fill out our audition form. But beyond that, each area has a lot of autonomy and what they're looking for, for their potential students. Um, so I would encourage you to go online, do a little research as to what they're looking for. If you still have questions, feel free to email me or email a faculty member. It's very easy to find them on our website. Uh, check it out and learn a bit more about them. Um, we will talk a little bit more about ensemble uh, auditions a little later in the video, or at least ensembles as a whole. And I would uh, just remind you that like, if you're a non-major, these three dates that we've mentioned in November, February, and April, those aren't the dates that you'll be looking for. Uh, those are for people who want to major in music only. Uh, if all you're looking to do is join an ensemble, those audition dates will come up this fall in August, or for the next academic year in August 2021. Um, one more time, uh, you can find out so much information about our audition dates and what we require at wichita.edu slash audition, or you can feel free to email me, uh, Jesse Koza, and again, my email's coming up a little later in the video. Uh, I'm now going to kick it back to Alex to learn about our facilities. Yeah, let's talk about once you... Once you're accepted into the School of Music uh, and you come to our beautiful campus, 
what kind of place will you be? So you will spend the majority of your life uh, in the Dirksen Fine Arts Center. Um, that's where our faculty offices are. It's where our classrooms are. That's where our rehearsal spaces are for our large and small ensembles. Um, our practice rooms, which you can see in the slide, I love this picture. Um, these little, uh, uh, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, but sort of fishbowl dome windows that you'll see are actually um, replicas of old World War II bomber windows. And those are our practice rooms. So you have a nice view to the outside as you sit and uh, toil away on your instrument to get, to get better. Um, the Miller Concert Hall, which is one of our, our larger ensemble spaces for concerts, holds uh, 523 audience members. And there it is right there. Um, our large ensembles like wind ensemble, symphonic band, orchestra, uh, jazz bands, jazz arts one and two, as well as our fully staged operas and concert operas all take place in Miller Hall. Second to Miller Hall, we have Wiedemann Hall. Uh, which is right next door to Dirksen Fine Arts Center. And chances are, if you're not in Dirksen, you're probably in Wiedemann. Uh, Wiedemann houses uh, a 425 seat recital hall. Our choirs perform there, our chamber music uh, is performed there, student uh, and faculty recitals are often given in there, and it also houses the great Marcusen organ. Uh, this organ was built specifically for this hall, and they were actually built at the same time. They were literally like hand in glove, and um, we actually had to get special permission from the organ makers themselves to build this organ. Uh, it had to be vetted, the space. So it's quite a uh, special instrument. There's none like it in the uh, Midwest for sure. And we have organists from all over the country who come and visit and perform and speak to the sort of amazing instrument that it is. So those are our facilities. Um, you'll get to spend a lot of time in them and you'll get to spend a lot of that time in your ensembles. So who better to speak about the ensembles that we offer in the School of Music than our own director of bands, take it away, Tim Shade. That's right, ensembles. Just about any possible ensemble experience you're looking for, you can find at WSU. Uh, the primary ensembles we'll talk about first will be our concert ensembles. So on the band side of things, my world, uh, there's the wind ensemble and the symphonic band. We have five choirs that you can be a part of. Uh, there are two big bands or jazz ensembles, and then there are numerous combos. And then on the opera theater program is huge. They do two productions a year. Uh, and then the Impulse Percussion Group is actually a chamber ensemble of only percussionists. And you can find many ensembles like that in all of the different areas. So string quartets, brass quintets, maybe a horn choir, um, all kinds of things that you could be a part of. So like I said, anything you wanna do on the concert side, you can do without question. Ensemble auditions, which is what uh, Jesse was referring to, occur like the Friday before classes start or the Monday of classes. So you don't have to worry too much about preparing until towards the end of the summer. Most of us put some sort of audition excerpts up on the website. Jesse actually coordinates a lot of that. He's great at that. So if you have any questions about where those excerpts can be found, ask Jesse. Uh, and then the other ensembles that are really cool are the athletic ensembles. Now, those are in my area too. Gotta love the bands. Uh, we have two athletic ensembles. One is the Shocker Sound, and that's the basketball band. We're an award-winning group. Uh, we, we have 30 to 60 players at a time. We play for all of the men's and women's basketball games. Uh, so that group is sort of the core. A new group that's about three years old now, I think we'll be starting our third season this year, is the Shocker Sound Machine. And so this is, is a marching band, kind of. Uh, you know, instead of being outside and little wool uniforms and the big shako and all that stuff, we're on the basketball floor. Part of the reason is that at Wichita State, we don't currently have a football team. So we've had to find a way to engage uh, the marching community uh, with our unique sports situation, which was basketball, and basketball is king. So we sort of decided to come up with this high octane dance based group uh, that's related more towards DCI, Drum Corps International, or if you ever saw the Broadway hit show Blast, very closely related to that. 
We move fast, we do all of our own arrangements, we've had these really cool uniforms and brand new instruments that are our way. So Shocker Sound Machine is brand new, there's not another ensemble like it, uh, and man is it fun. Students and audiences have been really, really into it. So yeah, ensemble-wise, whatever you wanna do, uh, we've got something for you. Hey Jesse, did you wanna talk about some orientation stuff? Heck yeah, I wanted to talk about some orientation stuff. Uh, I want to throw two websites at you really quick. I'm big on websites. I don't know if you can tell that already about me. Uh, the first is wichita.edu slash orientation. Now, that's really marketed a bit more toward our first-year students. If you're a transfer student, you might want to check out wichita.edu slash transfer. Uh, that's going to have a bit more information specifically for you. I will say I found it easier, no matter what type of student you are to go to wichita.edu slash orientation and then click on the sign up for orientation link that is near the top of the page. Um, but of course, if you're a transfer student, hopefully you're already in contact with somebody who can help you find the information you need. Uh, there is actually one first year orientation happening today, May 28th, one a week, in, uh, once a week, every week in June and then twice in July. Transfer orientations happen once in June and three more times in July. And if you're an adult learner, they've got one in June and one in July for you so that you are included as well. Uh, now there are sort of two types of orientations that we are now doing in our uh, post socially distant uh, world. Uh, the first is online orientation. Now this is sort of the required half of the orientation duo uh, they're self-paced modules, so, you know, do it at your leisure, but just make sure you get it done. That way you're fully ready to come here in the fall. The second type is the virtual orientation. And while they're not necessarily required, we strongly encourage you to check them out. Uh, they'll give you an opportunity to make connections with faculty, advisors, and current students within your individual colleges so you can learn more about what to expect at WSU. Uh, it's a really great opportunity to make sure that you hit the ground running when you get here in the fall. Um, something you might do as part of these tours uh, is meet people from our college, take a virtual tour of campus, even if you haven't done so already, and learn how to get involved at Wichita State. Uh, so now that you've learned about advice, uh, excuse me, orientation, I'm going to kick it over to Alex who can tell you about advising. So one of the most critical parts of being successful in any school of music and really any degree program at any university is good advising. And we are fortunate in the College of Fine Arts to have some of the best advisors around, quite frankly. Um, there are sort of three people that you might interact with um, in the School of Music. If you are a first year student, all of your advising will be done by our uh, department that's called One Stop, and you'll work with Brittany Ulmer. And Brittany's gonna help you get all of your classes registered for the first year. She knows which theory classes to put you in, which keyboard class to put you in, history, ensembles, all of that. She is a master. And if you have any issues in your enrollment or just throughout the year, Brittany's the person to help you. Once you finish your first year, congratulations, now you get to be promoted to our second uh, through fifth year advisor, Jan Ives. Jan works in our College of Fine Arts Advising Center, um, lovingly referred to by many people as Grandma Jan, um, because she just cares for our students um, so deeply and carefully. And she's going to help you navigate the rest of your degree program making sure that you are taking the gen eds you need on time so that you don't save them all for the very end, making sure that you're meeting all of the music requirements along the way. Now, if you start to struggle at any point, and it's okay if you do, because we've all been there, we are very fortunate that we have a success coach, Stephanie Cockrell, and Stephanie's gonna sweep in and she's gonna make sure that you are getting the support you need with things like uh, learning how to do your calendaring, uh, learning, you know, just sort of checking in to make sure your work's being done, putting you in touch with the tutoring center, all of those things that are so important to your success. So if you're one of those students who are having a bit of a difficulty, we've got someone to help you on, on that side of things. Once you audition, once you're advised, once you're thinking about your ensembles, 
the next question that usually comes up is how are we gonna, how am I gonna pay for my education? And so one of the ways we can help you with that is with scholarships. So we're lucky we have a committee uh, in the School of Music that helps deal with scholarships and that's chaired by Tim Shade. So who better to talk about scholarships than Tim Shade? That's right. The number one question that I get from most prospective students are, how do I get a scholarship? Uh, how good do I have to be to get a scholarship? You know, uh, do I have to major in music to get a scholarship? All those kinds of things. So at, at WSU, uh, you have to be a music major uh, to get a scholarship from us. So if you're on the fence, one of the things we usually advise students, if you're thinking like, I want to be a biologist and a trumpet player. You can double major at the start, and when you take your audition, we can possibly get you some scholarship that way. Uh, it says we award about $500,000. That's the total pool of scholarships for our four years. Each year, we award about $80,000 in new scholarships. In fact, I just closed out the books uh, two days ago for this year, and we hit eighty grand on the dot. There are tons of different types of scholarships, uh, some for where you live, some for your instrument or your voice type, uh, some for, believe it or not, what church you go to. So definitely, if you are curious about being a music major, take this audition and inquire about scholarships. Um, we actually also have a couple of, of unique new initiatives that we're dealing with. Um, the, the Conrad Wolfville's Bing competition has been around for a while, uh, but we sort of were, were gifted a, a nice large pot of money by Marilyn Smith, I believe is the, is the individual. And this is gonna help enhance some of our scholarship offerings in the coming years. So it, it, a lot is changing, uh, it, but it's all, all in a good way. Also, if you are, you know, a lot of questions we get sometimes are around like, does my GPA have to be really, really high or what are my requirements if I, once I get a scholarship, what do I have to maintain? So there is some GPA requirements, usually above 3.0, um, some even better ones above 3.5. There is a, a unique scholarship we have called the Buck Scholarship. And as you audition and apply, um, our success, our, our advising office, which includes Jan Ives, and Sonia Wiles is a name we haven't mentioned yet, will automatically look and see if your GPA and if you happen to work off campus, that's one of the big stipulations, uh, meet certain requirements that you can get some extra money that way. So we'll, we'll also look for that as far as your talent level. Of course, that's what most scholarships are based upon. But your GPA does count and if you have an off-campus job. Like I said, there are tons of, tons of criterion that can help get you a scholarship. So don't, don't let that deter you from anything. Also on the slide you're looking at is the FAFSA. You must fill out a FAFSA form to be considered for scholarship because some of our scholarships are based upon actual financial need that is decided by that FAFSA form. And all of this stays completely anonymous. I don't know these individual uh, financial situation that's kept behind closed doors. But uh, like I said, Sonia Wiles, who I work closely with, she finds out all that information. So scholarships are a big part of what we do. At the graduate level, I forgot to mention, we also have graduate assistantships. So if you're thinking about coming back for a master's degree, we can have some help there. So we try as hard as we can uh, to get each student some financial support. Uh, we, we had a really great year this year, and we just didn't get the scholarship everybody, but we sure try. So definitely uh, take a look, try and, try and be curious about it, and ask a lot of questions. We try and get as much money for students as we can. Yeah. Um, so I think uh, the other thing I want to mention on the scholarship side, too, is once you come here, we also do supplemental scholarships. Um, so if you're a current student, we have a simple little application you can fill out that um, you can say like, hey, I'm having a hard time this year, you know, this happened in my life, or, and sometimes we're able to award a little additional money for the year as well. Um, so even when, if you come here with no scholarship or with a smaller scholarship, there's always opportunities to increase that scholarship package as the years sort of go on. So um, just wanted to put that out there. I do also want to mention um, that to be considered for a scholarship, there's no additional work you have to do. Your audition is your, uh, is your work to be considered for a scholarship. So you don't have to do an extra form or anything like that. Just you sign up for your audition time and that's your audition for a scholarship as well as to admission to the School of Music. Now, you've watched the video. 
uh, chances are you may have more questions and that's perfectly acceptable. Lots of ways to reach us and I just want to talk about the names that are on the list. So I'm Alex Sternfeld Dunn. I'm director of the School of Music. If you've got sort of big questions about the school, about your experience, please feel free to reach out to me, ask me any questions you want. If you have questions about scholarships, ensemble auditions, um, things of that nature, Dr. Tim Shade, our associate director and director of bands, he's the, a great person to reach out to as well. You can also reach out to Jesse Koza if you've got just general questions about the School of Music, about the audition process, about things like where we're located, where do I park, all of those kind of things, go to, go to Jesse Koza. Finally, there's another member of our team who's not on the video today, but that's Anne-Marie Brown. And Anne-Marie works in our main office. Um, once you're, she's an administrative officer, once you get here, you're gonna be interacting with her a whole bunch. Anne-Marie helps with things like locker checkout, um, with practice rooms, with keys, with scheduling rooms, all sorts of things. And she is pretty knowledgeable about most things that are happening in the School of Music. So she's another person you could uh, reach out to with questions. Now, with things changing as often as they do, I think it's important for you to stay in touch. And we have lots of ways for you to do that. I think the best way to get the most comprehensive overview of our school is by going to our website, wichita.edu slash music. We do have an Instagram at WSU School of Music. Right now we're doing a very nice feature on pets of the School of Music. So if you'd like to see what kind of animals our faculty and staff have, go check that out. We do have a Twitter account as well, at music underscore WSU, a Facebook account at WSU School of Music, and we have a YouTube account, which you can look at that long uh, URL, or if you just go into, go to YouTube and search for Wichita State School of Music, our channel will pop up. What's, um, that channel is great because it's got some videos from previous concerts. It also has a lot of the videos we've been doing on Facebook Live. So one of the things, you know, Jesse already mentioned the Talking at 12 series. Those are up there, but also this uh, last couple of months, I've been uh, interviewing former, uh, well, not former, current alumni, former students, um, and including, you know, um, Angela Parrish, who uh, sang the opening to the great movie La La Land, uh, Kevin Bobo, who is a percussion instructor at Indiana University, Andrew Bishop, who teaches saxophone at University of Michigan, and there's even an amazing, although not done in an interview um, because the internet was not great, but a really beautiful personal message from uh, Joyce DiDonato, legendary uh, opera singer. So lots of ways to stay in touch, see what's happening, um, you know, follow all of those streams to just sort of keep, keep seeing what's happening in our school. With that said, I wanna just thank you all for coming and viewing. And I think we have some final words from our Dean, Rodney Miller. Thank you, Alex. Uh, well, that is a very brief rundown of uh, most of the features of the School of Music. I wanna reiterate again uh, that the College of Fine Arts at Wichita State is one of the most respected colleges of fine arts uh, in the United States. We have, for over 90 years, we've had a storied uh, legacy of hiring faculty from all over the globe uh, with international reputations who mentor, teach, and train our students, not just to be uh, good musicians, but to be good people. And those uh, students going out and making their mark in the world as well. Faculty and alumni from this College of Fine Arts have either won or been nominated for just about every arts award that there is. Um, from the Oscar, to the Tony, to the Emmy, uh, to the Grammy. Uh, and they have performed in just about every major venue, uh, from Broadway to Hollywood to every major opera uh, uh, hall and uh, concert stage that there is. And the School of Music has uh, 
a lion's share of that legacy uh, to their name. Most of all, though, what I want to leave you with is to welcome you to the family. If this pandemic has taught us anything, it has taught us uh, that we truly are a family. We thought of ourselves before that, uh, before COVID-19 hit, but it has only reinforced the feelings that we have. Uh, we have wonderful staff and wonderful faculty in the School of Music and in, and in the college who are willing, wanting, and waiting to help you become the very person that you need to become, either as a musician or as a person. And that journey will start here, but it will definitely not end here. But this uh, virtual presentation will end here. As I say, welcome to the family. Welcome to Wichita State. Thank you.